Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So recently on Patreon, we did a poll, right? Interstellar won. This movie came in second. This is Arrival, guys. I've never heard of it. I've never seen it. Apparently, this movie is highly scientific. So we're going to do our best not to interrupt the film. We're going to try to catch all these concepts. And stay tuned to the end. We are going to try to break it down, I guess, as philosophically as we can. So all right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Arrival. Lynn Bear. When we first got together, I told you I made what? Cook cucumbers? Yeah, grill cucumbers. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely did it. Yeah, I was really like wrap, trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> I was like, what is this man talking about? A oh, lava bear, my bad. I used to think this was the beginning of your story. Memory is a strange thing. It doesn't work like I thought it did. We are so bound by time, by its order. Okay, so she had a baby? Aww. That's crazy. That's the exact literally the exact same blanket my first son was in when he was born go back to me pick him up these are my tickle guns and i'm gonna get you <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that horse i remember moments in the middle i love you i hate you <laughs> and this was the end oh man she got cancer can you come back to me but now I'm not so sure I believe in beginnings and endings. There are days that define your story beyond your life, like the day they arrived. Well, that sucks. Damn it. Are you crying? Oh, poor baby. Good morning. How long have we been watching this? Hold on, hold on. Wait, we're four minutes in. You ain't gonna have nothing left. You better give me some water. Here you go. No, I got my water. I don't want your crummy water. Again. You better eat something healthy. You better eat something healthy and drink some water. Oh, God. That's the saddest thing in the world. Man, no, literally no parent in, in the world should have to outlive their kid, man. That's that's the saddest thing in the world. But I know. Don't you feel that one right? Yeah. Just right off the bat, four minutes in, that's just so sad. All right, let's go. Today, we are talking about Portuguese and why it sounds so different from the other Romance languages. What a small glass. Any news you want to share? Dr. Banks, can you turn the TV to a news channel? The object uh, apparently touched down 40 minutes ago, just north of I-94. So this is the moment of contact right here. I'm learning that more objects like this have landed at as many as eight other locations around the world. This is worldwide. It is happening right now. Ah! Oh my gosh. Man, they gave me anxiety. I know. It's a uh, class is dismissed. Could you imagine how crazy that would feel? Like in real life, that'd be surreal. I hope I'm alive. And those jets just cash. <gasps> You're busy looking up. Makes you want to park a lot. <laughs> Maybe. Do you even know if it's from Earth? We're still collecting information. If this is some sort of peaceful first contact, why send 12? Why not just one? I like that house. It's very lake-ish. That's that shot earlier in the living room mm -hmm. with the first scene in the movie. Mom, please don't bother with that channel. You know how many times do I have to <laughs> tell you those people are idiots? Mom, I'm fine. Okay, I'll call you later. Eight hours after landing, there's still no signs of what might be called first contact. Yeah, now, now the objects uh, measure at least 1,500 feet tall. Two are reported to have 1,500 feet tall. One in Siberia and the other off the coast of the Black Sea. Bended above oh, the Putin ocean. going to war. So far, there are 12 unidentified objects spread across the globe. I wouldn't be able to sleep, honestly. Whoa. Yeah, look at all this unrest. Guys, I know it's such a loaded, basic, very, very, very elementary question, but do you believe in aliens? Let me know in the comments. And if you don't, or if you do, please explain. I don't think anyone's showing up today, ma'am. President this morning has declared a state of emergency. Panic buying of gas, water, and food continues to escalate, and federal authorities have temporarily lifted all caps on overtime for law enforcement. The ATF put a temporary ban on new gun licenses. For it's going to be expensive that day. I'm Colonel G.T. Weber. We never formally met, but two years ago, you did some Farsi translations for Army Intelligence. You are on the top of everyone's list when it comes to translations. And you have another two years in the SSBI, so you still have top secret clearance. I have something I need you to translate for me. 
So she's like a communications expert? I guess so. I thought she was just a professor. Can you, can you understand us? No thanks. Where did you come from? <laughs> what do you make of it? Ancient Valyrian. Um, how many, um, speaking? Are you, are you sure? Did they have mouths? So how would you approach translating this? Do you hear any words, phrases? I, I, I don't know. I can tell you that it's impossible to translate from an audio file. I would need to be there to interact with them. That was Grout. It was like, what was she supposed to do with that? Right. She's not like a lion or something. I know. <laughs> tell me what I'm doing. I'm not taking you to Montana. It's all I can do to keep it from turning into a tourist site for everybody who has a TS clearance. I'm just telling you what it would take to do this job. If I leave here, your chance is gone. Good day. It's funny because he was Hello. complaining about being rushed early, mm -hmm. and now he's rushing her. You mentioned Berkeley. Are you going to ask Danvers next? Carol Danvers? Ask him the Sanskrit word for war and its translation. An agreement on sharing scientific discoveries looks closer tonight as Russia and China joint talks at the United Nations. Ooh. <laughs> Is that pulling up at her house like that? <laughs> oh, no. Colonel? Gavishton. He says it means an argument. What do you say it means? A desire for more cows. Thank you, bags. <laughs> All right, give me 20 minutes. You take off at 10. Rushing the mess out of that girl. So they're picking this girl up so that way she can go meet these aliens and try to decipher their language? I guess Communicate so. Communicate with them or figure out what they're saying? Because they're growling, right? Yeah. That's the thing about aliens, guys. Like, they could they could communicate in ways that we can't even fathom. Like, right. we don't even know what that means. She asked per first, did they even have mouths? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because how did they get that communication? That was strange. Like, Morse code is, like, communication. Like, they can... And that's a very basic... Hawkeye! Oh, he's going to shoot it with an arrow. That's crazy. Just picked her up. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Language is the foundation of civilization. Who's Banks? You know me. It's quite a greeting. Yeah, well, he wrote it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ian is a theoretical physicist from Los Alamos. You'll be reporting to me, but you'll be working with him when you're in the show. That's what they call him, the UFO. <laughs> Priority one. What do they want? Where are they from? How did they get here? Are they capable of faster than light travel? They obviously bent the space-time continuum, bro. How about we just talk to them before we start throwing math problems at them? This is why you're both here. That's a good I'll match. You need it both. You really do. That was smart, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, they say these UFOs, if they're real, they're somehow bending the space-time continuum to actually propel themselves through space-time to change their position. They're not using, like, a, a standard propulsion system, which is insane. Right, because they can't have gas, because if they ran out, they don't have any here to get. Why does that look like a big pebble? To be honest, it sort of looks like a like they're about to try to kick a field goal. Right. Is it making that noise? I this think so. music. Oh, okay. See, this thing, this thing can't be following the normal laws of physics. It'd fall, it'd fall over. It's suspending itself in air. This is when we see the space force in action. Cell Put these on, you're gonna wear them at all times. Sir, they're here. Louise Banks, Ian Donnelly. When's the last time you did something stressful? Does it now count? Hmm. And give you an immunization dose that covers a battery of bacterial threats. Could you sign these, please? Ooh, that would be scary. <laughs> That's what I'd be the most scared of, getting <laughs> sick or something. Medications. Radiation. Pregnant. Yeah, something like that, yeah. You see what's happening? Yeah. Gravity starts to shift and slides us out of the They're room. in communication all around the world right now. Have you a scientific right explanation for it? Is it for them? Uh, no, we think it's for us. If their atmosphere is different from Earth, it would certainly take hours to, to rebalance CO2 content and pressure for us every time they open their door. So you're saying they could suffocate us if they wanted? Remember, we need answers as soon as possible. Where they want, where they're from, why they're here. This is the priority. Now, have they uh, responded to anything? Any shapes, patterns, Great. numbers, Fibonacci? We can't tell what they're saying when they respond to hello. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's a 15 minute walk. 
So they've tried to communicate with every like with every mathematical concept we can think of, everything down to like Fibonacci numbers, and nothing's working. Maybe there's a wall, like a glass wall. You can't get to them. So what do they look like? You'll see soon enough. Hurry up. Man, they look like an Among Us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do, don't they? I'd be so intrigued about how this thing is balancing itself. For some reason, I don't really find aliens interesting. I only find their craft interesting, their propulsion system. It's like, look at that thing. It's not even touching the ground. Oh, I didn't even know that. I thought it was touching the ground. <clears throat> I wouldn't go up under it. It could crush you. Yeah, the shape of this thing seems to be 100% efficiency. Hey, no architecture, no wasted windows, just smooth. They're probably looking at that like pfft, mm -hmm. that machine. Oh my gosh, I'm like getting anxiety. Yeah, they need to set some floodlights up or something. I mean, you're just riding a dang apple picker into a dang <laughs> an apple picker. <laughs> That boom left. Whatever it's called. That thing ain't going that high. No shot. Huh? Very weird. Gravity's different in there. Yeah, that just happened. So you can climb? All right, let's move. Time is wasting. It's all good, sir. Okay, bring it up. Whoa. That'd be so confusing. You okay? You just have to trust it, right? <laughs> Goodness. You can do this. I think. Grab him. Right. That's kind of how I'd be feeling. We're going to go down there. And you're going to start your job. Team is in position. We're on the move. Doesn't it feel like you shouldn't be going there? Yeah. It feels very uninviting. If you have to, like, do some crazy gravity walking. Well, there obviously has some type of artificial gravity on the inside, but I don't know how they're creating it. Maybe it's the same thing that is their propulsion system. And that, to me, is like, you know, don't enter. <laughs> yeah. But you're trying to go see the bright white light you see before you die. Oh my gosh. I might sound really stupid, but what's in that white room right there? Am I supposed to know? The aliens. They're in there? So, I think that's like where they're at. They kind of look like spiders, don't they? Those were not human looking at all. That's my dude. So much of like how we're going to perceive aliens is going to have a lot to do with how they look and how they smell. Mm -hmm. If aliens stink, dude, no shot. Like we're just not going to like them. And if they look like bugs of any type of sort, like spiders or anything. We both have till zero two hundred hours to figure something out. Okay, what happens then? You go back in. That's gonna be hard. She has a hard task. They sound like whales or something. Right, you saw no mouth on that thing, right? I didn't even see what it looked like, to be honest. To me, it looked like an octopus silhouette. Oh yeah. Violence continues to spread across the U.S. today in the wake of the 12 landings. The president has declared a mandatory dust to dawn curfew after the crackdown by the National Guard failed to prevent a third night of looting across the country. 
In North Dakota, 144 members of the St. Lawrence Pentecostal cult are feared dead after they set their compound ablaze. Their website claims the arrival of the aliens set in motion a prophecy that 12 sets of 12 should be Wow. That would definitely disrupt the world, for sure. Yeah, we've been playing back some of their sounds. Well, they play audio back at us from an unseen source. Audio of what? Uh, it's bits of conversation from the room, uh, random clips of dialogue. So they can hear them too? Yeah, they're trying to communicate with them all around the world. I would assume they have their best like experts in like communication. Because apparently that's what she is. She's an expert at like language and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all around the world, they're just trying to, you know, figure, figure out. out what they're saying because they can't communicate. That's why math is like a universal language. We can all communicate in math, hopefully. Except for me. Well, good thing if aliens come, it ain't going to be us talking to them. Right. Look, I'm never going to be able to speak their words if they are talking. But they might have some sort of written language or basis for visual communication. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, maybe they need glasses. I wouldn't be able to see that either. I'm human. That's crazy. That is so crazy. It looks like arms, like hands. Yeah. Either that or some tree branches. I guess I mean to know when they like leave. What's with the bird? I don't know. I've just been accepting it. Circle. Solar eclipse with a spider at the end. With like a collision on it. Oh no, that could be like. Please. That's incredible. We're not humans, we're this. Okay. Okay, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> what is that? What? So their language looks like splatter paint circles? I don't want to take yeah. away from your success in there. But Dr. Banks, is this really the right approach? Trying to teach him how to speak and read? That's got to take longer. You're wrong. It's faster. Right, what did you get them to do besides Everything make noises? I have to explain to a room full of men whose first and last question is how can this be used against us? So you're going to have to give me more than that. Kangaroo. What is that? In 1770. Captain James Cook's ship ran aground off the coast of Australia and he led a party into the country and they met the Aboriginal people. One of the sailors pointed at the animals that hop around and put their babies in their pouch and he asked what they were and the Aborigines said kangaroo. And a point is? It wasn't until later that they learned that kangaroo means I don't understand. So <laughs> I need this so that we don't misinterpret things in there. Otherwise, this is going to take 10 times as long. I can show that for now. <laughs> that was smart. And remember what happened to the Aborigines? A more advanced race nearly wiped them out. Yeah, anytime something like this happens, it just gets story. so much. It just becomes so stressful because the military's involved barking about it. Like, There's I get no it. Point. But she's right. They could be using words that we don't think means that word. I don't know. They can't seem to follow our algebra, but complex behaviors that clicks. Problem is, not everyone shares our policy of being open with the aliens. Have you met General Shang? Oh, jeez. We have to get ground today. Okay. You have a vocabulary list for me? I do. Well, the aliens seem friendly, though, right? Can't tell, really. You're going to teach them your name. What if that means F you? These are all grade school words. Eat, walk, help me understand. Okay, this is where you want to get to, right? First, we need to make sure that they understand what a question is. We need to clarify the difference between a specific you and a collective you, because we don't want to know why Joe Alien is here. We want to know why they all landed. We need to have enough vocabulary with them that we understand their answer. Right, obviously. Forget it. Stick to your list. Just don't add anything to it. Yeah, like their their form of thinking could be so radically fundamentally right. different. We just have we no just, idea. It, yeah. it's, it's limitless. Maybe it's his name. No symbol, I can't tell. I think it's a symbol for human again. Just have a little curl on the end. Maybe to indicate a question. I don't know. 
Are they about to feed it the bird? They need to see me. We gotta get the whole camp set. Very dedicated. I know. She's brave. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're coming closer. Oh my lord. So they're like a squid. Now that's a proper introduction. Louise. Ian, you want to introduce yourself? Louise. I hope by the end of the movie, I'm completely able to read this language that's got going on. Like, I'm very literate in it. But doesn't it seem like the aliens built this ship, like, with this purpose? So that way they could, yes, yeah, so they could walk up to the window. It's almost like they built a zoo or something. Like an aquarium. Or just, like, so they don't have to, like, interact, interact with yeah. each other to give diseases. So they seem really advanced, super different, intelligent, and maybe friendly? Ian. You. Who are you? They seem like they want to talk. I think those are their names. I got names. Squirt and Squirt. <laughs> so what are we going to call them? I don't know. I was thinking Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Why? Yeah. We should have just pretended like we needed those. Oh, the oh yeah. Were. Of course, Abbott. I like it. And Costello. <laughs> <laughs> So she had a few breakthroughs. That's pretty cool. How do you feel? Overworked. <laughs> well, I guess I don't need to tell you. You're putting yourself at risk. Well, there's no signs of radiation poisoning yet. We'll see how your blood tests look. For now, I'm going to give you another boost. Honey, you don't need to worry. Just calm down. Honey, it's not going to happen. It really ain't that serious. He could help, though. He was just being so, like, stone cold. Maybe he's not allowed to tell. True. Yeah, and she's got to do all this while going through all this stress. Mm-hmm. Greek, heptis seven, pod, foot, seven feet, heptapod. Who are they? The heptapods leave absolutely no footprint. The chemical composition of their spaceship is unknown. The shell emits no waste, no gas, no radiation. Are they scientists or tourists? Why did they park where they did? The world's most decorated experts can't crack that one. The most plausible theory is that they chose places on Earth with the lowest incidence of lightning strikes. The next most plausible theory is that Sheena Easton had a hit song at each of these sites in 1980, so <laughs> we just don't know. <laughs> what the heck? So random. How do they communicate? The first breakthrough was to discover that there's no correlation between what a heptapod says and what a heptapod writes. <laughs> Ian walks. They're Aww. so game, though. Like, they want to learn. Their writing is semi-sciographic. It conveys meaning. It doesn't represent sound. That's crazy. What if they had bad handwriting for an alien? We have our friends right. in Pakistan. Their written language has no forward or backward direction. Linguists call this nonlinear orthography. Is this how they think? Whoa. Imagine you wanted to write a sentence using two hands starting from either side. You would have to know each word you wanted to use, as well as how much space that it would occupy. A heptapod can write a complex sentence in two seconds, effortlessly. Next, expanding vocabulary. Louise thinks it could easily take another month to be ready for that. They came to Earth with the intentions of learning to communicate, it seems like. Yeah, it does okay. seem like that. You approach language like a mathematician. You know that, right? I will take that as a compliment. Yeah, well, it is. I watch you steer us around these communication traps that I didn't even know existed. I guess that's why I'm single. <laughs> Trust me, you can understand communication and still end up single. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everything that happens in there comes down to the two of us. Well, it's good that she's becoming flirtatious again. <laughs> Tonight, the first photograph of the aliens goes viral. We could be facing a full-scale invasion. What if the smartest thing we could do right now would be to give them a show of force? I don't think any any person would think that's the smartest thing to do. You give them a shot across the bow. <laughs> I know. What if we're just outmatched? <laughs> I get the panic, though. Yeah, I do. 
What's this word? That's like, um, the Earth is a planet. We had to make up our own TV show. And who are those two people? It's you and Dad. The show is called Mommy and Daddy Talk to Animals. You know it's okay to be sad that your dad I and know. I... I'm not. So we both love you very much. Oh, they got divorced I before. I was... Too. I thought her passing, like, stringed it. Yeah, I thought so, too. I thought that's how that went down. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I wonder if she's even had time to, like, mourn and stuff. I don't know. It kind of didn't show us that, like, at all. I mean, I know that mourn lasts forever, but... Oh, my. You know, I was doing some, some reading um, about this idea that if you immerse yourself into a foreign language that you can actually rewire your brain. The Sapperwurf hypothesis. It's it's the theory that uh, the language you speak determines how you think and it affects how you see everything. Are you dreaming in their language? I mean, I've had a few dreams, but I don't. I don't think that that makes me unfit to do this job. Did you sleep? A little. Do you know Mandarin? The voice you're about to hear belongs to China's military chief, General Shang. He's saying that each of the 12 is offering advanced technology. Our science team is attempting to decode the um, sets. Something about advantage, suits, honor, and uh, flowers. I don't know, that's all. I don't know what it means either. An hour ago, China mobilized forces, and now Russia's following suit. Suits, honor, flowers. Colonel, those are all tile sets in Mahjong. Are they using a game to converse with their heptapods? Maybe. Why? Well, let's say that I taught them chess instead of English. Every conversation would be a game, every idea expressed through opposition, victory, defeat. You see the problem? Yeah, I see the problem. The yeah. I gave you was a hammer. Everything's a nail. We need to ask the big question. What's the big question? Why are they there? No, they've been asking that one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's complicated, guys. This might be a lot tougher than Interstellar. You come a long ways. I know. Do you see you're communicating with them? With mm -hmm. the, that's pretty cool. What does it say? Offer weapon. Oh. But you saw what they wrote. Using a word they don't fully it understand. Really just understand. A warning. Enough. We don't know if they understand. The difference between a weapon and a tool or technology the culture is messy and sometimes one can be both and it's quite possible that they're asking us to offer them something not the other way around so how do we clarify their intentions beyond those two words well i, I go back in colonel the secretary of defense is on the line for you oh no we already got out because mm -hmm. of you it was him we need to sit on this information until we know what it means so we aren't sharing it with our enemies. We have to consider the idea that our visitors are prodding us to fight among ourselves until only one faction prevails. There's no evidence of that. I'm sure there is. The British with India, the Germans with Rwanda. We're a world with no single leader. It's impossible to deal with just one of us. And with the word weapon now, I'll burn. Oh, gosh. China now fired on it, probably. China and Russia are off the grid. They aren't speaking to anyone. Whatever they learned in their last session has them spooked. Oh no. Yes, sir. We have orders to do the same. Wait, these are our Girl, allies. Colonel, you can't shut us Put down. Put us on radio silence. Do it. Use weapon. This is the alien message said to have provoked the Chinese government to withdraw their scientists from the international mission today. General Shang said, China no longer trusts the aliens who want to divide us. Humanity must be protected. I'd be frustrated if our government leaders were trying to fire on these things and start a war with them. <sighs> That's a bomb, bro. Why? Because I think they're about to just blow them up in there. Ten minutes? That's all they get? That's a genius idea, isn't it? I mean, they probably have a whole fleet Dr. in space, but whatever. You can't go back in. It's dangerous. Look, we just need five minutes. Don't sweat it. Oh, my gosh. Offer a weapon. Question mark. Are you offering us something? Technology. Apparatus. Method. It seemed like nice words. I know. I didn't see anything wrong with that. Give technology. I'm always impressed at their ability to create the software. 
Mm -hmm. So like capture all that. They did that fast. Well, they had a lot of sessions with it, I guess. 37? No, I'm saying just the technology they're using to just... Oh, yeah. Like a little program. To translate? Yeah. Heaven wants me to ride on the barrier. How does she know that? Can you even do that? I don't know. Oh. Why does she keep having flashbacks like this? I don't know. Are they like inducing them, the flashbacks? Maybe they communicate with thought? Maybe. Or maybe they communicate through feelings? She like wrote like, that? She yeah. did that? Did it run? Wow. The thing is talking fast, ain't it? Mm hmm. save them that was wild that thing's controlling the gravity that was crazy hey, hey, hey take it easy you suffered a concussion slow back how do you feel how is ian well, same as you he's okay who did this some soldiers i've been watching too much tv we're standing by to evacuate where's ian he wouldn't leave until he knew you were okay your whole tent is on the clock to figure out whatever it is you were given up there. The feed wasn't interrupted by the explosion. Nice fast, right? See. Glad to see you awake. We need to go back in and we need to explain to them that this wasn't our we, fault. We can't we go back inside. Them. We have to. What happened in there was an attack. We can hope for the best, but I have orders to prepare for retaliation. We may have to evacuate. No, that's the wrong move. As long as they stay, we have to stay. Yeah, I don't blame you. No. Uh, Man, pulled up, tried to teach the language art skills, and y'all want to blast them like that? Well, they're not leaving. Yeah, they're not leaving. Why does this feel worse? Right, because they're really trying to tell them something, right? That's what it seems China like. It's only offensive. They're positioning their military to blow the alien vessel right out of the sky. China becomes the first world power to declare war against the aliens. General Shang, chairman of the People's Liberation Army, said the aliens have 24 hours to leave Chinese territory or face destruction. Pakistan, Russia, and Sudan are thought to be following China's lead. Man, every army on the planet is gearing up for war. We can't be random. It's going to take us years. What's this term here? Mom. Hmm? Uh, what's this term for that thing? Like a, like a technical term? Where we make a deal and we both get something out of it. Uh, compromise. compromise. No. It's a competition. Mm -hmm. But both sides end up happy. Like a win-win. Like a treaty? More science-y than that. No, not a treaty. If you want science, call your father. Like a mutual arrangement? Mutual assurance? What time is it? It's the time you open that bottle you've been hiding. You cracked something, didn't you? Yeah. Ooh. It seems to be talking about time. Their symbol for time is everywhere. So what is this? A formula for faster than light travel? There are too many gaps. Nothing's complete. How much of this is data? How much of it is negative space? So I measured it. 0. 0.0833 recurring. One of 12. We are part of a larger whole. Or we're one of 12 contestants for the prize. Why do I have to talk to him? We're all working together. <laughs> we need to talk to the other sites. China just threatened to destroy their shell. We're on our own. Yeah, but this says that all of the pieces fit together. And I'm telling you that no one else cares. Two hours ago, we pulled this audio off a secure channel in Russia. In their final session, the aliens said, there is no time. Many become one. There's got to be a miscommunication going mm -hmm. on. Well, I mean, Russia just executed one of their own experts to keep their secrets. Many become one could just be their way of saying some assembly required. Why? Even if I did believe you, how in the world are you going to get anybody else to play along and give up their data? We offer ours in return. A trade? It's a non-zero sum game. That's the non-zero sum game. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Yeah. Thanks. But at this stage, it's too little, too late. What we need is to get all the other nations online before one starts global war. My guess is they'll order us to evacuate within the hour. 
Did How she did just have like a eureka moment? Mm -hmm. What? What the hell is she doing? Saving us all. They sent out like a probe or something. Mm -hmm. Is it about to pick her up? Oh, it's saying, okay, they're invitation only now. I don't blame them. Yeah, 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 I get it. Well, Ian, you better go on. Man. That's really risky because you know that thing could have just chomped her up. She really trusted Abbott and what's the other one's name? Right, them two aliens. <sighs> Are they sanitizing her? They pulled her hair right out the button. I wouldn't want to be on that side of the glass. Whoa, they're a lot taller. Did you see that? You silly heptapods. They're huge. That's the leader. So that whole time it didn't duck down or anything and just talk with his feet. Where's Abbott? <gasps> no. It wasn't the explosion, was it? Maybe. I'm sorry. We're sorry. I need you to send a message to the other sites. No, she doesn't. Use weapon. I don't understand. They need humanity's help. Yeah, they are I not procrastinators. I don't understand. Who is this child? She doesn't know the child. Right? I thought she did. The show is called Mommy and Daddy Talk to Animals. <gasps> That's the little alien thing. And a bird. But that's the same button nose. Wait. No way. Wait. Dang, it dumped her off in this dipping. And it didn't even like, it just said, you have the weapon, bye. Dr. Banks. Louise, are you all right? You all right? Yeah. What happened? I'm trying to figure it out. This is stupid. It doesn't matter now. We have orders to evacuate. I don't understand why they help me, Mama. I don't either. <laughs> me either. Mama. What day is it? Do you know, baby? Sunday. Are you going to leave me like Daddy did? Hannah, honey, your Daddy didn't leave you. You're going to see him this weekend. He doesn't look at me the same way anymore. It's my fault. I told him something that he wasn't ready to hear. I know something that's going to happen. I can't explain how I know, I just do. And when I told your daddy, he got really mad. And he said I made the wrong choice. What's going to happen? It has to do with a, a really rare disease. And it's unstoppable. So she knows it's going to happen to her? I just realized why my husband left me. My husband left me. Oh, you were married? Oh no. What's my name, Hannah? Your name is very special because it is a palindrome. It reads the same forward and backward. Mm. I didn't know that was the word for that, a palindrome. We're taking this with us. Bro, I'm really confused at what's going on with her. Hmm. I can read it. I know what it is. What? It's not a weapon. It's a gift. The weapon is their language. They gave it all to us. Do you understand what that means? So we can learn heptapod. When you really learn it, you begin to perceive time the way that they do. So, so you can see what's to come. Time, it, it isn't the same for them. It's non-linear. Look, we did our best, but it wasn't enough. Ian, Luis, it was an honor to work with. 
Just like that. Well, I wanted to explain more. Keep going. Look, there's a sign. So she's in the future at this point. Potentially. This is like a flash forward. Pleasure. General Shang, the pleasure is mine, really. Your president said he was honored to host me at the celebration. Yes. But I confess, the only reason why I'm here is to meet you in person. Me? Well, I'm flattered. Thank you. Now, 18 months ago, you did something remarkable. Something not even my superior has done. What's that? You changed my mind. You're the reason for this unification. All because you reached out to me on my private number. Your private number, General? I, I don't know your private number. Now you know. I believe it was important for you to see that. I called you, didn't I? Yes, you did. So, I'm piecing it together a little bit. These things communicate through time. So somehow, some way, the president of China communicated with her through time to give her his number. Oh, shoot. So now she's about to call him to try to, like, convince him right, to broker peace down. or something. I guess so. There's a sat line here <clears throat> dying China. Stay with us, guys. Stay with us. Oh, wow. Whose phone is it? It's your phone, sir. Find out who's using that phone. What is it? I would hate for them to be looking for me. Mm hmm I would never forget what you said. Was it kangaroo? You told me my wife's dying words. Xiang Jun. Xiang Jun, you are correct. What are you doing? What are you doing? Changing someone's mind. No, trust me. Buy me 20 right steps. You trust me. Okay. You trust yeah. me. Yeah, you about to get him shot. Zheng, Bu Chang Chiu, Ying Xiang. Drop it! You are committing an act of treason. Wow. It's done. I'm done. So those heptapods did that. Breaking now, China has called an emergency press conference. General Shang, commander in chief of the People's Liberation Army, has announced in an emergency press conference that China is standing down. She did a good job convincing him, though, even with those dying words. And then she started teaching everybody. So basically, they're trying to carry this on for 3,000 years. Well, it looks like they came, they made their mark, they taught them the language, and then, yeah, and in 3,000 years, they'll call in their help. It will matter, yeah. Whoa. Oh my gosh. It's like it's changing a state, just like in that room. Crazy, guys. UFOs are just clouds morphing their shapes. Hannah, this is where your story begins. The day they departed, despite knowing the journey and where it leads, I embrace it. Oh, shoot. Do you get it, babe? Oh, my goodness. Babe, do you get it? I'm so sorry to stop the drama. Do you understand? No. Dude, Eureka, guys. I could be wrong. These aliens are communicating through time, right? They're communicating. Like, so, you know how we always talk about, like, if we, like, you know how I always say, even if we, like, saw aliens, we, not, we might not even recognize them as aliens. It might yeah. be so beyond our comprehension right these things communicate through like time so essentially she was able to communicate with the leader of the people's liberation army of china because he also understood this language model mm -hmm. so they communicate so the whole time we thought that that little girl died and she does but we thought that her we thought she passed away and then the aliens came but no she came after the aliens Oh, so stay with me. The aliens, she was learning while she was learning their language. She was starting to become awakened to perceiving reality outside of just like our linear time. Like time goes from point A to point B in a linear motion always. But she's perceiving reality outside of that. So as she's learning their language, she's sitting there getting glimpses into her own future. But yet she doesn't quite understand it yet. Oh. So in the end, even though she knows the fate of this little girl she still chooses to go through and have this baby and feel this pain oh, knowing so what she she's knows, gonna feel okay she understand like do you get what i'm trying to say yeah. uh, that makes it so sad because she knows this this little girl is gonna get sick but she chooses to have her and love her anyways through it oh okay i think h a n n a h 
See, she's sad and she's drinking that wine. I'm not trying to be graphic, but I assume that's where they're about to like do it. You know what I'm saying? You're ready. And she has like a heavy heart doing it. So she marries an Avenger. Daddy. She marries him knowing that he's gonna leave her and everything. She knows all this. She knows it right now. Remember she said, and her husband, he's like, I didn't know you're married. If you could see your whole life from start to finish, would you change things? Maybe I'd say what I feel more often. I, I don't know. You know, I've had my head tilted up to the stars for as long as I can remember. You know what surprised me the most? It wasn't meeting them. It was meeting you. There's the words. There you go. That's what she needed to hear. That's like a mind-blowing movie, dude. What in the world? So maybe like communicating that way is possible, but we're just not designed to do it because maybe we just couldn't handle it. Maybe not. Maybe we communicate just how we're supposed to. How good it felt to be held by you. You want to make a baby? See? Ouch. The same guy who directed Dune, by the way. He did a lot better job with this one. Well, okay. I wasn't supposed to cry today. So now we need to start the impossible task of trying to break down and understand this movie without sounding like complete idiots, basically. I think I summed it up, guys. I, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I would really have to rewatch this one again because I think like, I could feel myself in Interstellar. I was really just enjoying the movie like more in a sense. I was less worried about it. But in this one, guys, I was so confused about like the language model and stuff from the beginning that I did notice I was spending more time trying to figure it out than actually enjoy the story. With that being said, man, that was an incredible movie. That was a cinematic masterpiece. Unbelievable. We could go on and on about just how incredibly shot that was. The actor who plays Clint in the Avengers, like, I just love that dude. He is genuinely just one of my favorite actors. He has one of them. He comes across just so genuine. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how you can't love that guy. If right. you guys haven't yeah. seen our reaction to the Avengers, I mean, in the first scenes of the movie, he loses his family and just, he just... He kills that. He he killed it. You mean the end game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End game. The Avengers end game. And once again, an incredible job by him. Incredible job by the by the main lead, the lady who played um the communications expert. Incredible movie. But with all that put aside, I guess I guess like I said, man, there was a language barrier and the way they communicated was so fundamentally different. Like we use we use words in a sense, but they used a completely different type of language barrier, like model. And I can't even describe it really. They used time and basically, apparently, they communicated through time, whatever that means. And it was an incredible story, guys. Basically, I thought that the girl had cancer, babe, and it turned out she had never even been thought of. It's just as the lady was learning the language, she was slowly starting to slip out of how we're wired to think our our language model like you, you know it's funny because the movie made a lot of a lot of talk about how our language model makes us perceive reality a certain way and when she said that i immediately thought politically i was thinking like okay like maybe like like if you talk like really like i don't know like do you get what i'm trying to say like the way you talk means like how you see the world politically but i think what she was saying is like the way you communicate is a literal, it literally means like how you perceive like true reality at its truest level. And in this language model, once you understood it, you, the way you viewed reality was fundamentally different. You viewed it in a non-linear way. You viewed it outside of space and time. And that's why ultimately she was able to know her own future and see her life from start to finish. And it had a hint of like determinism to it. Like, you know, if that's the case, then if you're outside of space and time, then you can only see it in a linear way. And so that dives into like the philosophy of like determinism versus like free will. And there was elements of that in there. And I'm sorry, I'm just ranting so much, guys, but that was a pretty mind boggling film, to be honest. What do you think about it? Baby? I just thought like, OK, you said all this stuff like, but that's opposite of what I thought at all. So like for me, it was kind of like. I kind of realized just like how important like communicating is period like just communicating like even communicating like the outcome of their daughter like how like it was a miscommunication in that in that um department but like also just how one communicates determines a lot like like you said it perceives reality because i've even thinking back to like english word phrases or english words whenever we hear like something translated into english um from another language it's always like kind of spoken like way different than I would speak. Like it's spoken like more poetic to, to my, in my opinion. So like, to me, like it kind of just shows how different languages, even, even like just languages, not even like interstellar languages, like 
just our language here, how how different things are perceived. I think a lot of it just wraps in the whole thing. Like if me and you are both sitting there saying, oh, this shirt's red. Like we both perceive mm -hmm. it as red. But if I learn red in your culture, maybe it's not red. You get right. what I'm saying? I don't know, man. It's I, just it's just different. Like, yeah, I get what you're saying. I get what I, I get what the movie's trying to right. say. It's just really hard for me to express it in ways because, I mean, obviously I'm not that eloquent. Like, and the, I'm not able to, the hardest concept from this movie I got, like the hardest, like the thing that is leaving me thinking is like if my life, if I saw it all flash for my eyes, like what would i do like she did like would she tell him would she like i think that's where their issues were was she didn't tell him and they still continued on anyways like knowing that and i think he kind of was on the side where he would prefer to know is that where you're where you're getting well from that? it seems like he just wasn't like he didn't understand the language if he would have understood the language he'd have been on the same level as her and he'd have been on the same like wavelength level as yeah of the leader of the people's liberation army in china because they both obviously understood the language and they were able like they were able to break break the boundaries of space and time like the constriction of space and time like by learning that language it was almost like humanity evolved like that yeah. was an evolutionary point where humanity stopped perceiving space time the way that we do you know what i mean it's, it's hard to really understand these concepts guys because Ultimately, like we just have a four dimensional brain inside of a four dimensional reality. And as much as we try to understand the fifth dimension, et cetera, it's just not really possible because we just don't exist there. I think with these movies, like if we understood a new language model like that, I don't think that as a human, I don't know if our brains can handle that. Like it might be right. too much for us to process, you know, maybe like we perceive reality the way we do because that's the best we can do. You know, like maybe we're not meant to perceive things in another way, but I, I think I got, I think I got the, the moral of the story for the most part. I thought it was incredibly sad, man. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it was told so beautifully, like yeah. just being told through like something so traumatic, like you're kind of getting hints of your life, like through that very traumatic moment. Um, that was just heartbreaking to see. And like, uh, honestly, I thought that was honestly like a good idea for her to communicate that way because that was the best way for her to get something out of it. It almost went to show that like a lot of people would think, okay, if you have a kid and they have a limited amount of time, what would be the purpose of going forward knowing that that's going to be your reality? But I guess communicating with these heptopods, yeah, with these heptopods, right? They introduced a language model that ultimately showed her that it doesn't like the amount of time you have it, it doesn't really the way we perceive it, the way we measure it and quantify it based on like the, the the quantity that we have, that really only holds true inside of our perception of space time. Like once we're outside of that, like time could be so fundamentally different than what we understood that maybe she just understood that even if even if all that suffering was going to come, even just like one moment of just happiness and joy with her daughter was something that worth it. It was worth it. And maybe ultimately like she maybe she has the ability to relive those moments. I mean, that's the thing. Like if you're outside of space time and you're able to go like, kind of like in the interstellar movie, like he was able to go throughout time because he was outside of time inside the Tesseract. Right. right. You know, if you can always revisit those points in time, then those points in time matter. Like the choices you make matter a lot, you know, mm -hmm. like you don't just get to make decisions and then they just go away. You know, they, they always sort of exist there in space time. And it's just a matter of, are you tuned in to be able to see it at the time? And, Really, that's all I took away from it. Just an incredible story, really. It was more of a story about love and just. Right. But that leads everyone yeah. with the question. If you could see everything in your life, would you change things? Yeah. If you could see your future. No. If you knew ultimately that you were destined to suffer. Right. You know, but if you knew that through that suffering, there was going to come joy and there was going to be moments of happiness, you know, just bliss moments. Just pure, that you, pure happiness throughout your life. Right. right. Like, would it be worth it? And. That that's a question that that movie leaves you with. Like you have to sit there and wonder. Like, well, it almost tells me that like as humans, wired to perceive our reality, like it's almost like we're not capable of really understanding that question enough to even answer it. Right. You know what I but mean. But you like, know the other question with that is, if you can see that stuff, and you ask the question, can you change things? But then if you do change things, is it inevitable that it happens like that? Well, that was the whole thing that i was thinking in the movie that like the movie seemed to like wing more towards like there's there's free will and then there's determinism right, right? right those right. are two philosophies right and the movie definitely like had a really strong leaning towards like determinism because i guess the concepts would fall apart if if there was a free will like right, you know, right. a lot of uh, there's a lot of like scientific problems when it comes to free will even right. though free will is extremely intuitive like 
The issue is it makes a lot of sense that there is no free will, but every sense in your being tells you that you do have it. Right. So it's just like a really weird thing that so people if, have to battle with. So, so for example, like when he said, let's make a baby and she was like, N and let's say she said, nah, let's cuddle tonight. Like eventually they would have had that daughter. Like it just wouldn't have been that specific time. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's a hard thing. Like, well, I think the concept goes like, she still had to live her life. She's, you know what I'm saying? She still lived her life, but she was able, she was just able to understand and see the choices that she made. So it was almost like, bro, I don't know. I don't know. It's just one of those things, man. It's one of those, if you went back in time and killed your grandfather problems, it's, it's, it's easy. To, it's, it's not easy. It's something that you can understand, but man, me sitting there unrehearsed trying to explain it, it's, it's very hard to put it in a way that's not going to make me come off as ignorant, basically, is what I'm really trying to say. So I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments. That's a very good question, though. And I think ultimately that is the question in the movie is if she would have said no that night, does she still have the daughter? Right. Right. And like I said, the movie seemed deterministic in that way. But it seems also it seems but the intuitive thing is to think that if she would have said no, she just wouldn't have had that daughter or the daughter would have came out different. Right. Right. Because it's almost like you're breaking and you're branching off your timeline and that's fine. But then once you become outside of your timeline, you can't change it. It's weird, man. I don't know. It's all about linear, linear time flow. And a lot of these things, and that that's what's so weird, man. A lot of these things are so bizarre that they sound hypothetical, but these are the questions that the greatest minds in the history of the world has asked themselves for a long time. And it drove a lot of brilliant people crazy. So well, they are uh, really know. good questions. Like a, a lot of this movie arose a lot of great questions that I have. So. They're the ultimate questions, yeah. really. Because I mean. honestly, with the communication thing with the aliens, like she was so brilliant to the fact that she realized like, OK, I'm not no expert here. But like, you know, initially, if I saw an alien, I would be like, why are you here? That's what I would have initially just said. I wouldn't have considered that maybe, oh, they have different words for different things. Oh, they might not understand what I'm saying. Like, she's just brilliant. It was smart. Well, like, think about it. Like, we're humans. So we perceive, like, you know, our, our certain cone of colors, right? Like, we, mm -hmm. we perceive color the way that we perceive color. But if we were wired differently, like, if our, if our brain was designed differently, we would see. I don't, like, don't quote me on this, guys. Like, I, I'm just, these are, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what's it called when you just thought statistics and you don't really know if they're true or not? statistics you know what i'm saying anyways yeah. guys fact check me on this for real but apparently humans only see like 10 percent of all known color i think that's a really 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 high estimate i think it's like three percent but humans don't see reality as it is i mean bumblebees and stuff i mean they see colors that exist that we just can't perceive so true reality is significantly deeper and more broad than we could ever possibly understand so it's not crazy to think that other species could communicate so different, but my gut intuition has always been that if there are aliens on other planets, they're a lot like we are. Right. Because they're which, physical speaking planets. Of, speaking of which, those aliens that we saw, like, you know, and everyone perceives and portrays aliens differently in all these different things we've watched so far. But like this one in particular, what was your, what did you think about that? Like they kind of looked like a, like, like a thumb on a knuckle thing. I don't know. What did it? What did you think about that? Like, what did you think? Did you think like they were more advanced than us? Um, or? In my opinion, I think what the movie tried to do, I think they tried to make the aliens so unhuman that you took every human thought about reality that you had and you suspended it. Like you take them and you realize these things are so unhuman, like that there's no way I'm going to sit there and try to attribute like human motives and thoughts. And right. And, and it kind of pissed it. me off when they blew them up because I was like, they're just little like they're just little octopuses. They're like big broccoli sticks. Or right. Something. They're not. They're just trying to tell us something. Like leave the octopuses alone. I understand the the impulse to be scared of that three hundred percent. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I I hundred percent get that. Especially I just don't... like the word weapon. Like it's such like a aggressive kind of word. Like w when you use it as tool, it's kind of like a nicer way. But like when they heard weapon, I could see how your instinct would be like, oh snap! Like them things are about to eat us up. It would I be hard it. to communicate with an alien species that was extremely similar to us and had the same motivation. Oh, yeah. Like, if there was an alien species whose main motivation was to, like, reproduce, collect food, and have shelter, like, we would have an extremely hard time communicating with them. Right. So, I couldn't imagine I feel like an that, alien that communicated through their mouth, that would really be hard. Right. Yeah. And it would be scary. It would almost feel threatening. 
No matter what. The, the alien was threatening in general. It was, very, it was so foreign that it was very weird. Yeah. It was very weird, 100%. So, you know, I think the movie really just tried to make sure that you weren't too caught up on how the alien looked. That's right. why they made it look so different. Right, right. The, the alien could have looked like an egg for all of for all that matters. Just you as know. long as they didn't look like too human. Like, yeah. Right. But. I'm of the mindset. I, I, I really do believe that if we ever find aliens, I think aliens are going to be a lot more similar to us. I don't, I don't picture all these crazy creatures because I, I don't know. Maybe it's just my thought, but I always was told that what made humans smart. This is just me like summarizing, but like basically like if we didn't have hands and thumbs and stuff, we would not be able to create computers and stuff like yeah. that. Like, and these things, I understand that they could, they were so smart, but they didn't have any thumbs and stuff. So I don't know how they would even build spacecraft and stuff. I don't know, man. Uh, who maybe knows, they, man. And that's the thing, maybe they don't have to. Maybe they can like do it like telepathically. And then another thing is you think to yourself, like, are alien species out there? There could be alien species out there where dudes are recording videos for the internet. There could be alien species out there that civilizations have risen and fallen over the course of time and they existed millions of years in the past or maybe millions of years in the future and we're just not on the same time scale as them i mean time's completely relative that's something that we're learning a lot on this journey and just the idea of like do you believe in aliens such a simple question that that in itself is actually such a simple question it's almost even hard to answer right. but i don't know man, I, very like like the thing about me is you know how when you like when you picture an alien sometimes people picture them with, with like bright suits on that are like metallic almost like right. I always think when I think of that, I'm like, what aliens are are building are making those suits? Like, are they sizing are they everybody? Is yeah. there fat ones? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why like, don't I, they have any sense of style? Yeah, <laughs> like why why don't y'all like you know why isn't there name tags? Like, well, the thing about aliens that's really weird is you know it's weird because and I don't know if everyone thinks like this, but when I picture aliens, I picture extremely smart. So I picture not a lot of pettiness. Like I don't imagine aliens are walking around worried about getting cheated on or having egos or None of that stuff because they're aliens, right? Like they lean towards efficiency. The reason they would lean towards efficiency is because they exist in the first place. And if they exist in a way that we can see them, then they're obviously extremely intelligent because they've either broken the speed of light travel. They either know how to cover extremely large distances while freezing themselves for extremely long periods of time. Or either they're actually bending space and time and or they're already distances here. are not relative. Right. And they could be here by any of those facts. So if they're that smart, then they're efficient. And if they're efficient, then they're not going to have a sense of style because having a sense of style takes too much energy. It takes too much effort. There's too much ego involved. If everyone is just uniform, they're, they're, no thought, all thought can go into being efficient. Right. And ultimately, that's going to end up being like a robot. So. I, as I'm getting older, I, I'm starting to think maybe there's like a seed of like AI that's like seeding the universe. And maybe our job is to just create the AI here. And maybe one day our cell phones will be smart enough to go join that race and we'll just die out. I and have maybe no we idea. could just talk about this all day because we really we could. could talk about this all year, man. Like we really could. Who <laughs> yeah. knows? Guys, if you Tell enjoyed this you video, think. yeah, man, let us know for real. Like, dude, if you guys want to drop some comments, just let me know what you think about anything that has to do with this field. Let me know what we missed in this movie. Please, someone explain it because I, you know, I, I think I sort of got it, but it's just like a sort of, you know, like I just sort of juggled the plot and there's so much that I missed. This is one of those that I'm definitely going to have to watch again. 200%. I really enjoyed the movie. The sounding, like the sound of the movie was incredible. They did a good job with that too. Uh, one of the best soundtracks, not in terms of like the music, but just the sound effects and the way right. that the humming of that was like actually right, really right. good too. Like yeah. surprisingly, like I, Normally, you would think that stuff's kind of like weird, but they did a good job with it. And it wasn't like too much. If you have any crazy concepts of what life could look like, um, when it could exist, where it could exist. If you just have any scientific theories that you just think just need to be heard, man. Like, you know, like it doesn't matter how far fetched it is, man. The, the reality is, is we don't know nothing about nothing. So nothing's too crazy. Let us know in the comments section. I really look forward to reading those. Thank you guys so much. Uh, hit us up on Patreon if you guys want more content. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff. We'll see you on the next one.